So today we're going to go through the steps involved with uh, preparing and painting an exterior of a house. Um, the very first step is to determine whether you may have lead paint on the house or not. And if the house was built prior to 1978, you can assume it has lead. You can test to have it lead. There's lead test kits that you can use. Um, but the best course of action at that point is just hire a contractor that is lead certified for lead safe practices and that'll cover all your bases. This building was built in 1980 so um, we, we uh, know that there's no lead paint and actually by peeling a piece of the paint off and seeing how flexible the chip is we can tell this is all latex paint. Uh, Oil-based paints would be brittle and just crack and not bend, um, and all uh, lead-based paints are oil-based paints, and they are, they're very brittle. They wouldn't bend at all, they would just crack right in half. So, um, so the next step, we have no lead, great. Um, the next step would be, does it need to be pressure washed? And the only times I pressure wash is when I determine it's necessary for either removing mold and mildew and algae, which would you would use a bleach solution to, to kill that and remove it from the, from the building. Or if it's on a road that gets a lot of road dirt, uh, usually the road side of the building is really dirty and just you just need to rinse the dirt off. Um, but I do not use a pressure washer to scrape, to remove paint. It's just to clean the building for whatever paint that remains after you're done scraping and sanding is clean and ready to accept paint. Okay, so after the house is pressure washed, uh, you could start scraping immediately if you want, but you should wait at least a week before painting. Um, and you can also use a moisture meter to test the substrate uh, just to be on the safe side and make sure it's dry enough to paint. But there's usually plenty of prep to do before that stage. So what we're going to do now is start scraping, and there's a lot of options with scrapers. I find that the majority of the scraping I do, I end up using a 5-in-1 for most of it, but I check every house, I check it what works the best. They have these carbide blade scrapers. They have this nice handle on it so you can really apply a lot of pressure. This has a carbide blade on it and it is reversible. You can just loosen that screw, pop it out, flip it around, and you have a fresh edge there. They also have the same tool without the handle, a little more streamlined, fits in your pocket better. So when you're on a ladder, that's nice. Um, and then they also have a, a uh, four-sided carbide metal scraper. And this one actually has a pretty dramatic curve to the blade, which comes in handy when you're scraping clapboards that are cupped. And it nests, nests right into the clapboard nicely. Um, so just try, try a, a variety of scrapers and just find one that works the best on the particular uh, house that you're scraping. There is one additional scraper that I sometimes use. It's a contour scraper, and it has a variety of different shaped uh, blades that you can attach to the, to the uh, handle. and, and we're going to be uh, prepping this T111 style siding that has a groove in it. So this will come in handy in getting into that, that groove. So this, this carbide bladed scraper is doing a great job removing all the paint, removing almost all of it, literally. literally. And uh, so that's how, I would, that's how I would approach this building. Start from the top, work your way down, have a drop cloth on the ground to collect the chips. Um, so you can, it's easy to clean up at the end of the day. And then the contour scraper in this, in this crack here, I mean, works perfectly. And then if there's anything else you want to pick away with, uh, usually the, the five in one um, does a good job of just doing all the same functions. But Let's say the carbide with this handle, you can apply some pressure, it's just blowing the paint right off. It's working great. So when I approach a house for prep, I don't, I don't like to scrape the whole thing all at once because scraping's hard work and you get tired out. So it's good to kind of break it up into sections. So you'll have a, a good day of scraping on one side and then maybe the next day you can sand it and prime it and then move around to another side and scrape and sand and prime that side. And even, you can even go back and start finish painting stuff, but um, um, try and break it up into sections so you don't get uh, fatigued um, doing the same thing over and over. 
Once you've completed the scraping portion of the prep, um, you're going to want to sand over the entire surface. Um, I use a random orbital sander and 60 grit. Um, sometimes I've even used 40 grit, depending on how hard the, the remaining uh, paint is, because you really want to fare the edges of the paint in, um, smooth the transition between the raw wood and the paint so it doesn't stand out and looks as good as possible before you apply primer. Um, and if there's excess dust, you can hook this up to a vacuum um, as well to capture the dust. You have uh, dust bags or containers on them that cap do a good job capturing it. If there's a excess dust on the, on the uh, house, um, you can remove it by using compressed air, a compressor with a little blower nozzle or even a leaf blower. Works pretty good to remove that kind of stuff because you really don't want to wet this down again unless you're willing to wait another week. Um, and you have a lot of exposed wood, so it's just going to absorb a lot of moisture if you hit it with water. So best to avoid that and just just uh, use collection systems or compressed air if you feel it's necessary. Okay, so once the, once the house has been cleaned, scraped, sanded, uh, any excess dust removed, you're ready to start the painting process. And the first step there is priming. 